Hello everyone and welcome to this week's lab. So this week we are talk about how we can analyze the Rust dataset, for example the air photos or the DEM or satellite images. Uh, so we all go through those very basic Rust functions in ArcGIS Pro and also we all learn how to perform some terrain analysis and also calculate the most common variables such as NDVI and uh, finally uh, we will do a suitability analysis by using the new suitability model that in ArcGIS Pro. So let's get started and by creating a project. And this is our, this is our lab 8. And we will save the data, uh, the project into our uh, OneDrive folder. And let's go ahead and, uh, and also create. And once we have the uh, the project ready and we're going to go to the catalog and also portal and uh, we're going to go to the um, ArcGIS online and then let's search the data for uh, this week's lab first so uh, we will use uh, the Landsat image in Harrisonburg. So let's search Landsat Harrisonburg. And this image was uploaded by me. So I uploaded this data um, like three years ago. So we can just drag this image to our uh, project. And this data should be already being projected. So let's double check the, uh, the PCS. So if we go to the uh, the source and also the spatial reference, uh, you can see it is projected. Uh, I used uh, the UTM zone uh, 17 nodes. So that is where the Harrisonburg is located. All right, uh, the second data set is a DM. So let's just search DM Harrisonburg. Um, remember that we're looking for the data that uploaded by my account. So WIXX and called GMU. So let's drag the DM. Uh, so the, this DM stands for the digital elevation map. So it shows the height on the ground. Uh, so once we have the data downloaded, so let's uh, export the data into our uh, geo database. So let's first let's export the DM. And we go to data, and we're going to export the Rust data. And here we need to change the location. So let's click. Uh, and also, let's say we want to save to our geo database, that lab 8 geo database. Uh, so this one, let's just call it DEM and save. Uh, for the DEM, it is not projected. So let's make sure we are using the, uh, the right PCS. So I'm going to use the same PCS as the Landsat image. So which will be the uh, UTM. So now I click export. Okay, so now the DM has been saved in my uh, local geodatabase. And let's repeat uh, the same step to export the Landsat image. Uh, we're going to save that in our uh, geodatabase as well. So let's call it Landsat. And this one already has a PCS. Uh, so let's just leave that as it is and uh, go ahead and also export. All right, so now the two data set has been exported. So if I go to my uh, catalog and also the project geo database, uh, if I uh, refresh, uh, you can see the DM is saved in my geo database, which contains only one band because it contains the, uh, just the height, so just one band. And for the Landsat, it contains eight bands. Okay, uh, so I'm going to remove the the downloaded uh, images and I just keep the the two dataset that we exported into our local geo database. And also remember to save our um, project. All right. So first, we're going to try some uh, terrain analysis. So uh, to find out those Rust data analysis, uh, we can go to analysis. And instead of uh, using the data that in this window, which is for the vector set, uh, we will go to this 
part which we contain the Rust functions. So the most common Rust data analysis are called Rust functions, while the VAC data analysis are called geoprocessing. And before we start, so let's change our environment. So let's go to environment. And let's say for the output coordinations, since we are all using the data in Harrisonburg, so let's say we want to use the same uh, PCS uh, for the output as the UTM. And for this extent, uh, because all our data will be focused on Harrisonburg, so the extent of the uh, for the output, so let's see which will be seen as our uh, Landsat image. And then let's click OK. So that makes sure that by default, all the output will use the UTM, and the out output, the extent will be the same as our uh, Landsat image. And next, let's open the Rust data analysis. So just click functions. Uh, you can also check the history uh, if you have uh, if you have function that run before, or you can just open the function panel, uh, where you can see we have a lot of functions. Uh, so for our first analysis, uh, we're going to calculate the slope. Okay, so let's search slope. And we're going to use this one, so slope calculation. And it is similar to the geoprocessing tools. You need to uh, provide input, change the, uh, the variables. So let's see, the, we will, to calculate the slope, we need the DM, right, the height. And for the scaling, let's use percent, percent rise. And you have two options. You can just create a new layer or save it as a single Rust dataset. Uh, so let's create a new layer first. So this is a difference that between geoprocessing and a Rust function. So for the Rust functions, the result is temporary. So if you only create a layer, so which means that if I click uh, new layer and now I can see the DM, the slope has been created. Um, okay, so that is the result of the slope. We can see range from zero uh, to 17. However, this layer is a temporary layer. So if you close your project, and the data will be lost. So if you go to your catalog, and uh, if you refresh, and you can see that a slope is not stored in our in a geo database. So which means this is really a temporary data set. So if you close your project, you will lose your result. All right. Uh, so because we don't want to lose our result, because we are use a slope later. So let's export this data. So go to data and let's export the raster, just as we did before. So let's export everything into our geo database. And this one, let's call it slope. And we will keep using the UTM uh, 17 nodes. And let's export. All right, so now we have the uh, slope being exported. So if we refresh, we can see we have the slope data set. Uh, I'm going to remove the layer. Uh, now I will uh, use the slope uh, for the future analysis. OK, uh, so now we have the slope. So let's change the colors. So uh, let's make sure that this layer is selected. Uh, so we go to Rust layer. Uh, similarly, as we did for the VAC data set, uh, set, so we go to Symbologies, uh, where you have multiple options. You can stretch, which means that uh, you are using a single color. Uh, if your data has discrete values, you can use discrete. Uh, if you want to classify your data first, and you can use classify data, or you can have the other uh, options like unique values, etc. Uh, so let's say we are going to classify our data first. So here, uh, we don't need to choose field because uh, uh, it just contains one value, which is the slope. Uh, you can see which method you want to use to classify your data. So let's uh, let me try the equal intervals. Uh, so here I think uh, now we can see where are the areas that has less slope, and so those basically those uh, yellow areas are the places that are more flat. Okay, because uh, the slope is uh, smaller. All right, uh, so that is the slope. And next, we're going to calculate the 
aspect. OK, so it's the same procedure. So uh, we go to the analysis, Rust functions. And here you can see aspect is right here. So I'm going to click aspect. Uh, if you cannot find aspect, you can just always search the function name. So I'm going to use aspect. Uh, for this one, you just need to provide the input, which is DM. And there's nothing that we need to specify uh, for the parameters. Uh, let's see, create a layer. So now we have this aspect. Uh, so let's save that to our geodatabase as well. So let's see, right click, data, export. Uh, we're, going, we're going to save that into our uh, database as well. So name it aspect and export that result. Let's remove the, uh, the tempor temporary layer, and now we have the aspect. Uh, for this one, let's also change the uh, symbology uh, because we are looking at the directions. So, so let's choose a vector field. So uh, and magnitude, we don't have magnitude. However, the, the band one contains the information about the direction. So now you can see the arrows show the direction uh, from the aspect. Uh, so whether it's towards the, the west or east or north or the south. All right, so, so now we can see that uh, for each pixel, so what is aspect and also what is the slope. All right, uh, so let's save the result. Uh, next, oh, we are going to do um, to use uh, uh, try to learn several Rust functions, and and the objective is that so let's say we are looking for uh, a locations for let's say a new residential building, and we have several criteria that. For that building, so we want that location can be far away from the regions where the elevation is above 500 meters. Okay, so uh, for example, in this case, uh, we know the highest elevation, which is the white part. So we want far away from this region. So the uh, so if for example the region in this in those areas will be worse. However, the region far away from that region, so areas far away from that high elevation regions will be better. So for example, this is better than this one, which is better than this one. Okay, so that is our first criteria. And how can we quantify that criteria? So this actually requires two steps. First one, uh, first we need to identify the regions where the elevation is above 500 meters. So we have the DM. We know the elevation is between 368 and 525. So we need to kind of extract the regions where the elevation is above 500. And the best analysis is called reclassify or remap. Okay, so in ArcGIS Pro, it is called remap, but in other tools, it is called reclassification or reclassify. So let's open the remap. And let's say we are going to call this one the DEM as an input. And we want see, we want, we are uh, interested in the region where uh, the value between 500 and above. So the, let's see, for the minimum of 500 to, let's say, 600. Although we know the maximum is 5 to 5, um, the output value will be 1. Okay, And for the value between 0 and 500, and we don't want those pixels. So we want that to be no data. All right, so that is our classification. So we reclassify the data based on the elevation, where if the elevation is above 500, we want to keep that result those pixels in the result. If the value is below 500, we don't want those results. Okay, so let's create a new layer. And now, uh, if I close this DM, now you can see we have just this tiny part. Okay, uh, which means that those are the regions where the elevation is by 500. Uh, for those pixels, we give them 
a new value, which is 1. So that's why that all the pixels have the value of 1. OK, so that reclassify. So uh, the first part that we have identified the regions where the elevation is about 500. And next, we want to keep, we calculate the distance. So we, so we want to say that uh, we want to be far away from this region. So the further, the better. And the tool that we are going to use is called distance calculation. So if we search distance, and normally we are use this one, uh, including distance. Uh, however, this function uh, is now going to be replaced by this function, which is called distance accumulation. OK, so let's just use a distance accumulation instead. So essentially, they are doing the same thing, but the new tool, which is called distance accumulation, uh, provide more options. So let's open it. Uh, so now we're going to calculate the distance that are from this reclassified DM. Remember, that is a region where we have about 500 uh, meter elevations. We don't have any uh, other options. We don't need any other option like cost, uh, surface, etc. So that's, let's just remove the other options. And now let's create a new layer. OK, and uh, so now we have this kind of the buffer. Um, uh, I think right now it's kind of hard to understand. So if you look at this region, so that's oriental region, and if you look at distance, you can see that the distance close to this region will have the value of 0, and the distance far away from this region will have higher values. OK, so that is the result of the distance calculation. Uh, so let's save the distance. So let's say right click and export the distance. And uh, let's save that one to our geo database and let's call it distance. And let's just remove the a temporary result. And uh, for the distance, uh, let's change the color so that hopefully. Uh, uh, you will be able to understand the distance better. So now you can see we have uh, one, two, three, four, five rings. Okay, so the now we class that data into uh, five rings. So uh, the yellow rings are the which has a short distance between zero and almost two thousand meters, and orange rings are the pixel that is. Uh, uh, the distance in between almost 2,000 to 3,400. And then we have the red rings, et cetera. So, so that is a result of the distance calculation. So, uh, so how far away from those pixels to that to our target, which is a region at about 500. All right. So now we have identified the first criteria, so that far away from the regions, where the elevation is about 500 meters. We definitely know that the red regions are better than the yellow regions. OK, uh, so now I'm going to remove the reclassified DEM. And uh, our second criteria is that we want um, uh, the location of the residential, uh, residential building to be on a flat area where the slope is less than 3% rise, and also it is facing the east, where the aspect range from 0 to 180. OK, so that is our second criteria. OK, so uh, let's first let's identify the location where the slope is less than 3%. So let's go to uh, analysis, Rust functions. Uh, let's just recall the remap or reclassification. And this time, we're going to use slope. And we, wa we want to find out the, the, uh, the places where the slope is less than 3% rise. So we say minimum value is 0. The maximum value is 3. Uh, for those values, we will give it 1. And if the value is above 3, until let's say uh, 
14. Uh, we all have that to be no data. And then we can remove the other uh, groups. And now let's create a new value. All right. Uh, so now we have the reclassified slope. So, uh, so if we compare this against a slope, and uh, you can see those are the regions that most of those are on those yellow regions where we have uh, uh, flat, uh, flat regions. So the slope is smaller. So that is a flat regions, a uh, flat uh, areas. And the next, we are going to find out. Uh, the regions, the areas where the, the aspect is facing east. Okay, the aspect facing east. So let's go to reclassify. And this time we're going to use aspect. And now let's see the value will be from 0 to 180. We want that output to be 1 for the value above 180 until 360. And the value, we want that to be no data. And now let's reclassify the aspect. All right, so now we have the reclassified aspect. So uh, let's see. Here you can see now we have the reclassified aspect where the direction is towards the east. And uh, if the region is the aspect towards west, they are not included in our reclassified aspect result. Okay, so that's perfect. Uh, so now I think uh, it's time to remove aspect and also slope. All right, uh, so now we have those uh, two reclassified data. So the first one is reclassified aspect, which means that they are facing the east. And the second one is the reclassified slope, which means that those are on the flat areas where the slope is lower. But we want the region that is uh, facing uh, east and also the flat. OK, so we want it's kind of like interaction of those two data sets. And to identify the, those areas, and there are multiple ways. So uh, actually, for this one, uh, we can try, like, say, uh, by use a calculation. So we can use a mass calculation. We can use one data times another data, uh, where the no data will become no data. And uh, so it's like cell by cell calculation. Or you can use a Boolean overlay. So Boolean overlay uh, here. So it's like we're going to find out the data that are both on the aspect uh, data set and also the slope data set. So you can, tr you can use them many tools for the same question. Uh, in our lab, let's try use a Boolean overlay. So, uh, specifically, we're going to use a Boolean AND. So here we use Boolean, Boolean AND. Um, uh, the input data will be the reclassified aspect and the reclassified slope. OK. And uh, the type will be the intersection. And let's create a new layer. OK, so no, now we have a new layer, which is kind of the, the data that are both on the reclassified aspect and also reclassified slope. So let's visually check that one. So we can see now it's definitely those, uh, the new result definitely is on the reclassified slope. And uh, if we just check, compare against aspect, we can see those regions are also on the reclassified uh, aspect all right so that the those now the the black pixels are the areas where the slope is less than three percent rise and they are facing the east okay so let's remove the reclassified data and let's export our uh, data uh, from the boolean end and for this data set uh, let's give the name let's call it flight and east, OK? Which means that those are the location where they are on the flat areas and also facing the east, OK? 
and let's export. And now the data has been added into our uh, project. So let's remove the temporary result. So now we have this data set, which is flat and east. OK, um, perfect. Uh, if you want to change the colors, uh, you can. So for example, in this case, since it's those are unique values, so I will go to use unique values. And you can see that just one color. OK, so uh, uh, the one value, that is value one. So we just gave it one color. OK, uh, so let's keep saving our project. Um, our last criteria is that uh, we are going to find out the locations where we have more vegetations. OK, so we want to have the place where we have more vegetations. Uh, by the way, so you can always check the, the description in the video so where I listed all, very, all the detailed steps. Uh, so how can we find out the region we have more vegetations. Uh, so if you recall that there is a index called NDVI, uh, that calculation is that we're comparing the, the reflection in the near-infrared near band versus the reflection in the red band. And we calculate the NDVI index, uh, where the NDVI is higher, uh, which means that those regions have more vegetation. If the value NDVR is lower, which means that the area has low vegetations. So if we want to find out an area that has more vegetations, we just need to calculate NDVI. And then we just say, OK, if they have high NDVI, then you will be the place that we prefer. So let's go to Analysis and go to Rust function. And let's just search NDVI. OK, so let's calculate NDVI. Uh, we are going to use a Landsat image. Uh, so for the Landsat image, you need to provide the band that in the red band. Uh, so here we have eight bands. You also need to provide the band information for the near infrared band. And here we also have eight bands. So if you are not sure which band you are going to use, uh, you can just search online and find out the Landsat uh, band information. And then you can come back and also provide the right band information. All right, uh, so here I'm on the USGS website. Um, because we're using Landsat 8 or 9, so uh, we're definitely not using Landsat 7 or 5. So I'm checking this table. Uh, we can see that the band 4 is the red band, and band 5 is a near infrared band. So we will use band 4 as a visible band and band 5 as a near infrared band. OK, so here, uh, let's go ahead and change the visible band. So this will be the band 4 for the red band. And this will be the band 5 uh, for the ne near infrared band. So let's create the, the layer first. Uh, here we have the result. And uh, let's just export the result first. So go to data, export. Uh, we're going to save that to our geodatabase. Let's call it NDVI and export. And let's remove this temporary result. And let's also change the color. Uh, for this one, I'm going to use uh, uh, classify. And because it shows NDVI, so let's use a green color. So. OK, so that's perfect. Uh, so here we can see uh, where we have high values or the dark green uh, regions are the region where we have the more vegetations. Uh, so if we compare that one against the Landsat, we can say yes. So uh, the region that we have dark greens are the trees, etc. And the region that we have uh, white colors on NDVI, and normally, those are the buildings, roads, etc. So NDVI uh, is a variable that index that we can use to measure that whether or not we have the more um, vegetations. All right, so now we have all the quantified criteria for our suitability analysis. So, so we have NDVI, which stands for the uh, vegetations. So high values will be better. Uh, we also have this one, 
uh, flat and the east. So those are the ideal locations which are flat and not facing east. So we want our uh, buildings will be located in one of those buildings of those regions or the pixels. Uh, we also have the distance uh, data set, which means that the higher the distance, the better, because we want to get far away from this high uh, elevation region. OK, so those are the three data sets we are going to use. Uh, let's also remove the original land set and also the original DEM. And also, let's save the project one more time. And now it's time to build our suitability model. So let's go to analysis. And we can see we do have this option called suitability model. So suitability model will consider multiple factors or criteria. Uh, you can define the weight. You can define uh, how to quantify those, uh, those criteria or the data set. And suitability model will combine all the criteria and produce a map where the higher scores mean that it's more suited to, for, your, uh, for your project. So let's open that model. And you can see here we have this model. Uh, it mean it need multiple data set. And if you go to suitability, so right now we don't have any criteria. Uh, so let's drag NDVI to our model. So now you can see NDVI is now one of the criteria. Let's drag the flat and east, which will be our second uh, result. And let's drag the distance, which is our third uh, criteria, so the, our third input uh, raster. Uh, so let's keep save this one, keep saving our project. All right, so now we have those uh, data set. We also need to identify, OK, so how do you want to quantify the contribution or the influence of those raster data, of those uh, input criteria. Uh, so for example, let's first let's check this one, flat and east. Uh, so I'm going to uncheck the other uh, layers. So flat and east. So this is like a binary data, binary, uh, binary data set. So means that so if it's located within this region, that's great. We will give the high score. If it's outside this region, we will give it zero or a lower score. So let's bring up those functions. So let's double click uh, this variable. Uh, so now you can quantify that how do you want to convert uh, this Rust data set into the suitabilities. So there are several ways. You can define a continuous function. You can manually define the suitability scores based on the values in your data set. Or you can give it uh, unique values for each category. OK, so in our case, I think uh, the unique categories works very well for our flight and east because this is a binary data set. We see that everything that within this category or within this data set, we all give it a score that is 10. OK. Uh, so now you can see we have the transform suitability uh, data set, uh, which means that so all the uh, all the pixels within that uh, on this flat and also east data set, they will have a suitability score of ten, and everything that's not in the data set, they will not dis they will not showing up on this uh, result. And above that, we have the current suitability map. So right now, because we only consider, we only transformed uh, this layer, so all the values, all the uh, pixels within this layer have the score of 10. OK, so as we add in other functions, uh, the suitability map will be, update, will be updated. So let's uncheck suitability map. And let's also uncheck the transformed uh, data set. Let's say next, uh, we are going to consider uh, the distance. OK, so let's bring up the distance. Remember that we want the higher values of the distance. We will have high scores. The low values are close to the high regions. We will have lower scores. So let's double click distance. 
uh, now you can see we have the transform distance value. Uh, for this one, uh, you can choose uh, unique categories. However, we have too much values, so unique category will not work, will not be the best uh, option. Uh, you can also choose the continuous functions, uh, where you can, you can also invert the function. Or you can choose the range of classes. So here you can see if the value distance is between 0 and 8, 800, uh, we give the score of 1. Is value between 800 and um, 1,600, the value will be 2. So that also another way, so you can give it manually give the suitability values. Um, so let's say we are going to classify. Uh, let's see, I'm going to use uh, uh, equal intervals or defined intervals. And where the distance, I'll give it 2,000. OK. Uh, so now you can see the suitability uh, map has been updated. So if you are, you are within the distance between two, uh, 0 and 2,000, the score will be 2, which are the uh, right regions. If the value is between 2,000 and 4,000, the value will be 4 and also 5, 7, and 10. OK, so that's how I transform the distance into the suitability scores of the distance. And now if we open the attribute map, so now you can see the, suit, sorry, the suitability map. Now you can see the score has been changed. So if you are close to the region, you will have lower score, which like for example is 12. If you are far away from that region, uh, you will have high score in this case. Uh, they are uh, 15. All right, so now it's time to consider our last uh, criteria, which is NDVI. So let's look at NDVI. And for NDVI, uh, so it's a value that between 80 and 158. Uh, so let's double click NDVI. OK, uh, so for NDVI, uh, what we want is that, so if you have a uh, smaller NDVI values, which means that uh, you have less vegetations, you will have lower score. If you have higher values, you will have higher score. Um, so for this one, I'm going to choose a continuous function. So just one reason that I, I want to show you that how continuous function look like. Um, and also another reason is that, so uh, I think continuous function will be more appropriate. Uh, so here, let's say we can choose uh, the small, large, near, ms, small, ms, large. So let's see how the small look like. Okay, small is like they have a very negative relationship, uh, which means that if you are uh, have lower scores, or if you have lower NDVI values, uh, you will have higher uh, suitability score. So that's definitely not what we want, right? We want the uh, the inverse relationship. So we let's invert the function. Okay. So now you can see we just uh, have the right relationship now. So where if you have lower scores, lower NDVI values, you will have lower suitability values, and if you have higher uh, NDVI scores, you will have higher uh, suitability values. So let's see how the MS small look like. Okay. So MS small means that so uh, if your value is up to let's say uh, for example to this range um, between the lowest values until uh, one hundred and thirty, within this range you will have the same suitability scores. And if uh, you are above that range, and when the value becomes higher, uh, the score will become lower. OK, so that is the default M as small values. So actually, we want the opposite relationship. So let's also invert that function. OK, so now we have this function, which means that, OK, so if your score is 
uh, below 130. If your NDVS score is below 130, and as long as you are below that range, your value will always be one. The the score will be the score of the suitability will be always be one. Once you are above that range, okay. Once you are above that range, the higher the better. Okay, the higher the better. So I think this fit with our uh, condition because you can see when you are below that scores, normally those are the roads, parking lots, or buildings. So we give them the lowest scores. And once you're above that 130 threshold, and the higher the better. So I am happy with this MMS uh, function. I'll make sure that it's invert function, and also we use a, that also belongs to a continuous function. All right, uh, so those are the definition of those functions. So we, now we have transformed all those three input data set uh, into our suitability models. And now if we look at our final output, we can see here the regions that uh, in this area, so are those all the resource area. So they are definitely have the bad scores uh, because they are far away from uh, this place. They have higher uh, NDVS scores. They also on the place where they are flat and also facing east. Okay, so those are the uh, this one and this one probably are the two best candidates. Uh, but finally, you can also play with a weight. So which means that okay, so now you have uh, three input criteria. Not all the criteria will play the same weight. Uh, in your project. So for example, if you think NDVI is more important than the distance, and you can give it a high weight. So for example, if I give it like say 10, uh, instead of one, and now you can see that this region, although it's close to this place where the elevation above 500, it still have high suitability score because it has really high NDVI uh, index value. And if we put the distance to a larger weight, let's say uh, 20, okay, now we can see the distance is definitely the, the major, um, the most important uh, impact uh, factor that decides the suitability score. So this region has the highest scores. Uh, so you can play with different weights and the all different weight combinations. And as long as you think you have a reason to do so, so feel free to play with different weight. And once you are okay, happy with your weight, so for example, I will give the, this one to be a five. And this one, let's say I will give it a three. Okay, and this one, let's say I will give it two. Okay, so I, I just assigned some random uh, numbers to the weight. Uh, so you can see the, the values will be different. And every time when we assign different values, this map updated automatically. So now let's run this analysis. The output will be a Rust data set. So let's run it. Okay, uh, so now we have our final result. Okay, uh, so the blue regions indicate high suitability values. So it, Probably it will be the best place uh, for your uh, project. And also the dark right regions have the lower suitability values. So those you should not consider. 